Hi, it's David, and I'd like to welcome you back to Life with Parkinson's. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. For everybody else, thank you for coming back and watching another episode. Today is a very special day because I get to update you on my Parkinson's glove progress. And you're probably looking at these going, Dave, those are not gloves. And you are right, they are not gloves. They are little finger pipes cut out of a hardened plastic pipe that used to be used on a ski slope somewhere, probably Worcester Blackcomb. And as you're going to see from the video later on, my friend Trevor at Pine Mountain Railway did most of the technical hard work, and he really deserves a round of applause because, because I believe we've made a breakthrough with these gloves. We've resolved the wires breaking off the motors. We've resolved getting good contact with the fingerprint part of your finger. And synchronization, now both hands are fully synchronized. We've solved a lot of issues. What we do now is these are numbered one through four. And I just pop them on. That's number three. That's number one. That's number four. And this is number two. So that's the left hand. And the right hand, it's the same thing. And number four. And if I do seem a little dyskinetic, it's because the longer I've been using these, this system, the more dyskinetic I seem to be getting in the afternoon. This is day 10 now with the, I'm going to call them version 3.0 Parkinson's gloves. And I have started to notice little small increments building each day. I don't want to get anyone overexcited. I'm not saying that we've reinvented the wheel. I'm not saying that we've been able to mimic the Parkinson's gloves exactly. What I am saying though is after 10 days on the homemade version of the Parkinson's glove, we've solved a lot of issues that have gotten me really good contact on my fingers and I can feel it working. On day 10, I am waking up with no dystonia in my right leg which has been my biggest problem for the last few years. I'm able to get up, walk to the bathroom, which is a big one for me because I used to get up and crawl to the bathroom. So just 10 days ago, I was crawling to the bathroom and now I'm walking there when I wake up. So what usually happens is I'll wake up, up around 4 or 5 a.m. and my mind is like, give me the gloves. I'll put the gloves on and go back to sleep and sleep for another couple hours. Yeah, they do their magic while I'm sleeping. The, the red pipe is very comfortable. We have an elastic band that holds the finger down to the pipe and presses it against the motor. It also lifts the motor up from underneath. I can now also, after I go pee, go to the kitchen, get myself a cup of coffee, and go sit in the front living room and watch the sunrise which I haven't been able to do that for a number of years as well. And now I'm getting dyskinesia in the afternoon, which sig signals to me, usually when I get dyskinesia, it means I'm slightly over-medicated. So it's possible, like I said again, I don't want to get people excited here, but it's possible that, that the gloves are working as they were intended to be. So that's all I'm going to say now is, if you're working on your own pair of homemade Parkinson's gloves, don't give up. Hopefully you find a good friend that can help you with some evolutions. So at this point, I'm cautiously optimistic. I hope to give you another update in four to six weeks. And hopefully I can give you some real concrete results. I don't know what's going to happen. It could continue to go good. And my progress could also just lapse right off. Here is how we made them, and I'll voice over some of the parts just to explain what's going on. I'll see you on the next one. Please leave your comments and thoughts below. Let's continue to take this journey together. Have a good day. Goodbye. Here we are getting ready. Trevor is checking all the measurements and making a design so we know what to do. He is checking the old gloves and comparing notes. He is getting the bandsaw ready. 
creating the shims and just making it as easy as possible. He just wants to make three straight cuts for every finger cuff. There are eight of them. You know, by the time we get to the 16th one, we'll have it all figured out. Yeah. This needs to get started on the outside. Yeah. Oh, come on. And the first finger pipe is almost ready. Next step to do is drill a hole in each of the finger pipes for the motor, just big enough to press it in so it fits snugly, but not too tight so that it doesn't turn properly and vibrate. This next step is very important and a new one for us. Trevor is going to mill a channel on the back of the pipe where we want to make all of our wire connections for the motors and then tape them over. This is pretty important because the biggest problem we've had is motor wires breaking off. This should solve it. Now that all the finger pipes are ready, we're set up in the trailer to do all of the wiring work. And it's quite a bit of work. It took us six hours in total to cut and drill all the pipes and then wire them all together and attach them to the controller box. So it was quite a bit of work. I'm getting the wires cut to size and the ends stripped. Trevor's getting ready to do the soldering. He's figured out a way to solder the braided wires together, which will be very stable and save a lot of independent motor repairs, especially when he's not there and available. Doing stuff this small, like 24 gauge and smaller, is currently beyond my abilities just because it's so small. It would take me a long time on my own just to wire one motor, so I'm very grateful for his help. Yeah. Trevor is getting the heat gun out there and heat shrinking a cover over the wires. So the first one is almost done. Once the first one is done, it goes a little quicker and you kind of know what to do. So. Yeah, that one seemed to take so long, like all afternoon. When you get to the point where we are now, where we're on version number three, just when you look back and see how far you've come, it it is quite far because the first set of gloves, every time I would take them and put them on or take them <laughs> off again, I was always putting strain on the motors and the wires were breaking so often. It almost became just ridiculous, like just an endless repair cycle. Version 2 was much better, but there was still the problem of wires breaking. Not as much. And the other problem was that the tubes were not very comfortable and they were a little small. So my bigger fingers just wouldn't fit in there and properly. And after I had them on for a while, it just became so uncomfortable. that I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Okay, time to time warp to the end. So I'm really hoping that with these gloves, if we want to call them that, now I'm just going to call them the Parkinson's gloves, is that I'm hoping other people can work off our design or if people find a, even a better design out there, 
that we just make this accessible to each other. I've gotten many requests from people asking if I can make gloves for them. And, you know, I don't know if I, I can or not. We don't really have the facilities to manufacture. I think it would need some sort of investment from somebody, someone who's done something like this before, just so that, number one, that a warranty can be provided for people. So if they do run into problems, things can get fixed. The other thing would be, you know, manufacturing standards. Like, I don't think you can hurt yourself with these machines the way they're built. You know, I certainly haven't been able to, but I would just hate to run into that situation. My biggest fear at this point is that if this actually does work, that it won't be made accessible to everyone. And that's really what I want from this project, is for the gloves to prove themselves and be made available to everybody with Parkinson's. That is what I am most concerned about, and that is the number one reason why we are taking this journey and trying to figure it out. Because we know how much people suffer with Parkinson's, and it would just break my heart if people couldn't have access to this wonderful technology. Well, we are nearly ready to fire it up and test it. And I hope that we've hooked all the wires up correctly because having to go wire tracing after this many hours of work would be very frustrating. But I will give you a heads up. No, it fired up properly and worked right away. A good reward for a fun day's work. Thank you so much, Trevor. I really appreciate your help. Hey guys, so we've got one pair of the gloves done. The motors are in sync and boy oh boy, what a difference. It's, I, I don't know how to describe it except I can feel it immediately hitting my brain and doing something. It's like a tingling in my mind. I know that sounds kind of weird, but we spent, we spent a good six hours of this today, but making a pair of gloves is definitely going to make a big difference. So I'll keep you updated in the next week or two how things are going, and I'll see you later. Thank you. Wow.